Hello, in this video we're going to go over the repeater, the timer and the multi-timer. The repeater just pulses a signal by this property count. So as it's currently one, if we execute it, the dish pulses once. So if we increase this count to 15, let's say, and apply it, and press execute, the output would pulse 15 times, but we can't really see that. So let's use the counter smart component that we looked at in the last video. And if we attach the output to the increase property, it should count to 15. Let's see. So repeater properties execute 15. Execute again, 30, 45. We change this to whatever we like. So let's pause it nine times. It will pause it nine times. The next smart component we're going to look at is the timer. The timer outputs a time when the simulation is running. So if we go into the simulation and press play, we can see that the current time is a property and it is increasing. So let's stop that. So what are these other properties? I'm actually going to start with the interval property. This interval property is the delay between when this output turns on. So if we set the interval to three, three and apply it, the output will turn on after three seconds. The repeat specifies if the signal should repeat by the interval. So after three seconds, the output will pulse. And with this repeat selected, after another three seconds, it will also pulse. And then another three will pulse and so on. We can show this by adding a counter and connecting the output to the increase. So select timer and play. And we should see after three seconds, we'll increase the counter. After another three seconds, we'll increase the counter. If we stop that and reset this, Go back to the timer, double click to get the properties. We can set a start time, which is what time should this interval start? So if we say we only want it after five seconds, nothing will happen in the first five seconds, and then the interval will start doing its job. It's best to show you. Let's play the simulation. After five seconds, we should see that the output pauses and then each interval it will also pause. And if we didn't have that repeat once again, the pause it would only pause once after five seconds. There is also a input, active input and a reset. I'll just show you what those do. So active is zero, it pauses. Active is high, it plays and the reset resets the current time. The next one we're going to look at is the multi timer. The multi timer is similar to the timer where it pauses an output after a set time. So let's say after timer one, we want to set this output. or pulse the output, I should say. And we could see this with a SR latch. So after one second, we should see the output turn on. Great. Let's reset that. But 
with the multi timer, we also have this count. So we can have, let's say, five time, five outputs. And then we can say we want to post the timer at different times. So the first output should post at one second, second one at three, 5.5 5 seconds, seven and 8.8 .8 seconds. Reset that. And let's connect these up to some SR latches. So we should see these turn on after the set time we set in the properties. So let's run the simulation and see. One second. It's turned on. Once turned on. Once turned on. There we go. Good time to use this is with the move to viewpoint smart component. I haven't covered this yet which we'll do in future. So if you have multiple viewpoints in the station, you can say, after one second, I want to move to this viewpoint. After three seconds, I want to move to this viewpoint. In the next video, we'll finish off these signals and properties by going over the stopwatch and the string formatter. Thank you for watching. Bye.